Hey guys, how you doing? This is Tyler Collins with Orange County SEO. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about e-commerce search engine optimization. Uh, a lot of clients come to us with e-commerce sites that need SEO help, and uh, most of them are not really prepared uh, in terms of the, the foundational SEO elements that need to be in place on the site um, to set them up for success with a search engine optimization campaign. So we're going to go through a lot of basic and, and some advanced tactics for optimizing your site for performance. Um, so the first, the first mission critical aspect of having a successful e-commerce site is choosing the right e-commerce platform. Most platforms don't come pre-built with SEO features in place. Um, most of them come with templates uh, built by programmers that are not really thinking with search engines, in, 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 search engines in mind, or they are but don't fully understand really what the search engines are looking for, or they don't have the capability to develop uh, according to the current standards in the way that you know Google and the other search engines have adapted their algorithms to uh, you know to expect certain things of websites. So we're going to talk about all those aspects of an e-commerce store as well as. Um, some advanced tactics you can use and implement yourself that will give you an advantage over your competition. So the platforms that we like to use are Magento. It's a very robust, very nimble platform. It's, it's really difficult to learn because there's a lot of moving parts, but once you do learn it, it's extremely powerful because it's, it's nimble and it can adapt to pretty much anything uh, you want to do. It's open source so you can have a programmer code within it. You can build uh, custom scripts and extensions and things like that and it does come pre-built with a lot of features that you're going to want to use um, for SEO uh, strategy. Another another platform that's really good is Shopify. Uh, that comes with a lot of SEO features pre-built into templates that you can get very easily and it's also customizable too so you can develop in it and create what you need to. Um, the bottom line is that all platforms are going to need some sort of customization with SEO in mind, um, whether it's you know to build around your keyword strategy, um, you know, or to just lay the proper foundation and 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 just put all the pieces together. Uh, pretty much every e-commerce platform is going to need some configuration customization as well as some some template customization. You see, because e-commerce platforms work with templates. You have you have the platform which manages your products, your customers, your orders, and all that kind of stuff. And then you have the templates, which is what all that integrates with to present your store to the world. And both need customization for best SEO performance. So let's go through some of the basic or commonly known as uh, industry standards when it comes to um, you know site quality and uh, optimizations of a website specifically e-commerce stores um, the first and one of the most important things is you've got to have good URLs the URL is that the page address in the address bar of your browser so you gotta have good static clean URLs that the search engines can read it's good to infuse keywords into those URLs separated by hyphens. Um, you don't want to go too long with your URL. Keep them short and concise. In fact, um, some of the recent Google updates have um, have suggested, you know, based on our data collections and analysis, um, have have suggested that short URLs are really effective so keep them short but don't miss out on optimization opportunities that you have within your URLs. Um, you want to avoid dynamically generated URLs where there's question marks and numbers and, and things you don't control. Uh, a lot of e-commerce platforms will automatically generate a URL based on the database entry or the, uh, the product page. Um, to know if your URL is dynamic, uh, you can just look at it and see if there's an equal sign or a question mark. That's typically a dynamically generated URL. You want to have real clean static URLs with slashes and words and dashes, .html, uh, slash, you know, page.html, that kind of stuff. Um, you want to customize URLs for your category pages, your product pages, and your information pages like your About Us page and things like that. Uh, unique metadata, which is um, the descriptive text you put underneath the site, is, is really important. Unique being original, uh, original to that page. You don't want to duplicate metadata across all your pages. You want to make sure that you have unique, original, well-written metadata. Um, that would be your meta title, your meta description, and your meta keywords. Um, keywords are not very important. Uh, all of the things created equal, if, if you're going up against a competitor and you have keywords in there, they might 
giving an advantage, but Google and the other search engines have pretty much discounted meta keywords as having any value. Um, however, um, your meta title, which is your page title, and your meta description is very important for a number of reasons. One, it's an SEO opportunity. It's really important real estate that you can use on your site. It's an optimization opportunity to insert keywords into the title and the description of that particular page, be it the home page, the category page, or the product page, which basically informs Google of the, the nature of the content on that page. So you can insert keywords there. Um, you also want to consider that that is essentially your advertisement when your when your page, whether it's a category page or product page, uh, ranks in the search engine and people are deciding what link to click from the Google page. The meta title and the meta description is essentially your opportunity to convince the user to click your link. So you don't want to be you know spammy or too salesy in that. You want to be descriptive. You want to be precise. You want to be concise, um, and you also want to optimize. So keep that in mind. So take the time to write out your meta titles and your meta descriptions for all your pages on your site. Don't be lazy. Don't get in the habit of letting the system build the metadata for you. Don't not have metadata and, and definitely don't have duplicate metadata. That'll actually count against you when it comes to search engine optimization. Google and the other engines do not like to see duplicate metadata. You're essentially cloning content throughout your site and, and you're not adding any descriptive information for them. So embrace what they've asked for and create unique metadata for all your pages. Um, <clears throat> the main navigation on your site is really important. These are the links that allow the users to click through to different pages on your site. Um, the main navigation is, is typically what you see underneath the, the header image or the header logo. Um, the main categories of your pages, you know, you have different product categories for all the different products you have on your site. That would typically be your main navigation. You might also see things like, um, you know, a cart button or an about us page or a blog link in that main navigation. So things to consider are you want that main navigation to be consistent throughout your entire site. Don't have one page showing one navigation and then another page showing another navigation. You want to make sure you funnel the proper authority through to your pages by having consistent navigation on the site. Also don't change layouts from one page to another. That's a no-no. So Google specifically is looking for cohesiveness of a website. You want to make sure that your pages are linked together correctly and universally throughout the site. Um, you want to link to major category pages from your main navigation and you want to also have an internal navigation structure if you have a lot of products like for example uh, or a lot of categories let's say you have 300 potential product categories where you're organizing the different products on your store you might they might fit into um, you know specific niche categories within your site obviously you can't fit 300 navigational links in your man, main navigation um, or you could but it's doubtful that users are actually going to use that main navigation bar to search uh, you know and drill down several layers into a navigational path to select that that optimal category and by the time you get there you might only have you know five or eight or twelve products in it anyway so what makes the most sense is to use uh, a, a siloed sort of approach or, or what we call dynamic navigation where the navigation changes based on the category page that you click into um, for example you, you might might click into um, main category page number one and then within that category page you would have subcategory pages in there of which you might have color options you might have uh, sizing options you can build out your your additional um, subcategory navigation the deeper you go into the site but have a consistent constant main navigation utilize uh, sub navigation on your category pages once you get deeper into the site and that also helps for usability as well because when users are going to your site they want to have uh, convenience to access all the different products in your store and you want that to be available to them so that they you know conveniently shop through all the different um, all the different categories that you offer you want to make that easily available to them okay so some other additional site quality uh, standards if you will or considerations one is you you, you pretty much want to have a site map you've probably heard that term before there's there's two main types of site maps one is an XML site map which you uh, have your system build most platforms will build that for you um, you need to go find this setting inside your e-commerce platform and then tell it to build a an HTML or sorry uh, an XML site map from your system from all your pages which is managed 
managed uh, by your platform, essentially a content management solution. So it already has a log of all the pages that you have in your store, including all the products. So you tell that system to build you an XML sitemap, and then you take that into Google and uh, create a Webmaster Tools account. You upload their verification file through FTP, and then you uh, submit the sitemap to Google and tell them to crawl that. Now, that's really important because that will send Google crawling through your site, and they will give you a report on how many links that were in that sitemap actually got crawled and actually got indexed. So that'll give you a good uh, a good view into the pages that Google can access, the pages pages that Google decided to index, and then from there they can give you uh, some some additional feedback deeper in Webmaster Tools about the health of your site. Um, the um, you know the duplicate content they will actually red flag you if you have duplicate content and tell you issues that you have on all the pages of your site so it's a good a good way to drill down into your site content and your product pages and your categories and figure out you know what pages are duplicated uh, d meta descriptions what pages are not being indexed and you can sort of go in and troubleshoot and figure out why maybe those pages aren't being uh, considered the other type of sitemap is uh, an HTML sitemap, which is actually visible uh, on the site, and you you, you want to be pretty discreet the way you build that. Um, you basically it's the same thing. You build uh, a universal set of links for all the pages on your site. You house those on one page, which are all those links are essentially linked from that one page, and then you can drop a link to the sitemap, the HTML sitemap page, in the footer of your site, and the benefit of doing this is it it allows Google when they crawl your site from the home page they will crawl your home page or any page for that matter um, they will immediately find that sitemap link and have ac immediate access to every page on your site for ease ease of crawlability if you will it's a term we use crawlability um, so you want Google to be able to find your pages easily you don't want to bury product pages um, you know, 10 clicks into your site that act, that makes it rather difficult for Google to to crawl all the way through, and um, you're not passing as much authority through your site. So, uh, site maps currently we do see working. There may be a day when HTML site maps uh, no longer seem to be very effective, but currently for a lot of the stores that we're building, uh, we do see a great result from that. And I'm going to give you another example of, um, of a store we built and, and all this criteria live so you can review it in another video. Um, other things to consider, uh, one is breadcrumbs. Uh, breadcrumbs are the navigational path that displays typically under the main navigation of the site. So if you click into a category then click in a product, it'll actually show you the, the navigational path of your click history and uh, your previous clicks will be linked in that breadcrumb uh, setting. This is really good for a number of reasons. One, um, just from a usability standpoint, it allows your users to, to take a step backwards conveniently on the site rather than clicking the back, the back button in their browser. And it also gives um, more internal linking structure for Google and the other engines to crawl when they are crawling your site. Now, <clears throat> there's uh, an advanced tactic you can use um, it's, it's more commonly known now and, and becoming a standard, which is adding schema-rich snippets or microdata to your breadcrumbs. That's something that is supported, and uh, we highly recommend it. We're seeing good results with adding uh, schema-rich snippets to breadcrumbs. Uh, canonical URLs. If you don't know what canonical URLs are, you need to research that and uh, understand what that is. It's really important for e-commerce, especially for people who are novices and using um, e-commerce platforms that they need to trust to do the right things and have the right things built into the site. Um, canonical URLs are essentially um, a way to tag an official or best page of a set of pages when there are when there are essentially duplicate of the same page. For example, with e-commerce, sometimes you'll have a product that will fit in that will be uh, um, appropriately categorized in multiple product categories. Uh, for example, um, I'll use a beanbag site reference. You might have a, uh, a black beanbag that is an adult beanbag but is also a kid's beanbag. Uh, essentially, you would then tell your, your e-commerce platform to display that beanbag in both of those categories. Now, sometimes what an e-commerce platform will do is they will build a separate URL for that product when it's in the adult category and 
the kids category so you end up with two duplicate pages on your site now it's really important to understand if your platform is doing this because two duplicate product pages on your site you're essentially duplicating your content and if you're adding that product to two categories there's a good chance you're adding it to more than two categories and um, you're gonna end up with duplicate content which is a which is a step even farther in the wrong direction when you're talking about you know duplicate meta descriptions and things like that actually having a duplicated page on your site and not tagging it with or tagging the appropriate one with a canonical or an, an official URL for that particular page uh, you're gonna end up with uh, a liability in terms of SEO and that page will not perform uh, organically in search it's not gonna rank if you have duplicate um, a duplicate pages on the site so make sure that you're using canonical URLs correctly throughout your domain um, e-commerce sites uh, are you're, you're creating transactions on the site so you have to have security settings in place uh, any site that that receives money or requests people's credit card information you, you wanna have good security settings on the site it's actually something that Google looks for uh, very recently they've announced the that um, HTTPS sites or SSL uh, configured sites will actually receive uh, favoritism um, they didn't use that exact word but um, they did say that uh, sites with security settings in place will be rewarded so um, we've seen this be the case in a, and a necessity for e-commerce stores for years and uh, it gives you a nice boost in authority and trust when you're looking to perform in organic search so um, a couple other considerations are um, you know if you're an e-commerce store you're a business okay so if if you're claiming to be a business claiming that you are safe to receive transactions do you have an about us page do you have a terms and conditions page do you have a contact us page with official business information is that information verified in the Google Maps directory these are all things that Google looks for when assessing the the quality elements of your website so that they can determine whether or not they trust you so have all the proper policies all of the proper terms and conditions uh, in place uh, for example if you're an e-commerce site and you're selling physical products uh, are you shipping those products to people and do you have a shipping and returns policy so you wouldn't think that uh, the Google robot would be looking for these types of things, but they do. They have a tough task of organizing the world's information and media and presenting only, only the most trusted resources to their users. So they do. They look for these types of things, especially when there's transactions taking place. Okay, so let's drill down into some optimization settings for uh, specific product pages and then category pages and then a few extra closing out tips. Um, product pages are... Are, are kind of the bread and butter for an e-commerce store. Um, they present uh, collectively as a whole the biggest SEO opportunities you have on the site. Number one being uh, people when they're searching for a particular product they search with long tail keyword phrases so they're searching you know the the product name uh, a potential modifier like a color or a size or a gender and um, and other modifiers that that uh, define their product searches much better most people go to the search engine they type in something broad then they modify their search typing some something with a modifier like a size and then continue to modify their search until they find the right uh, essentially product page uh, where they can review the product that they were looking to purchase so it's important to understand that your product pages are really really important with an SEO strategy for e-commerce now optimization opportunities will include but will not be limited to uh, product names uh, unique high-res images using an optimized file name unique content and product reviews now we're gonna go through a couple of those real quick product names are really important too sometimes um, sometimes e-commerce store owners um, are a little lazy about uh, building out their e-commerce stores because or they just don't know that there's a tremendous opportunity to optimize and do things just a little bit differently to, to have massive gains I'll give you an example a lot of people will get a product uh, catalog or a product list from a vendor or distributor and that product catalog will come with all the standard product names, all the standard product descriptions, all the stand standard images. Well, if you take that exact product catalog, catalog and, and deploy it on your website, you're probably cloning what a lot of other people have done. In fact, 
the manufacturer themselves probably has that exact information on their site. So what value are you adding to the web by simply cloning your vendor's catalog? Not much. And Google can see whether or not that content, that, that name, that description, that image was found on your site first, your manufacturer's site first, or a competitor's site first. In a lot of cases, you're using the same vendor as a competitor. So how do you separate yourself from the rest? How do you actually sell the same products and add value to the web and get recognition from Google and also users? Well, one thing you can do is you can optimize your product names. You can insert keywords in there. You can add some copywriting in there. You can turn them into much, uh, you know, much sexier headlines, much, much more persuasive text. There's a lot that you can do with the product name itself to to accomplish SEO goals as well as conversion goals. So keep that in mind and make sure that when you're optimizing your site, you fully understand your keyword opportunities. Obviously. You don't want to build category pages and product pages and build out your entire site and all the content without understanding where your keyword opportunities are. So use use some tools. You know, use uh, you know use the Google tool or have an SEO professional provide you a keyword research report when building out a site so that you understand exactly what keywords to optimize for for every product that you have in your store. Um, the images thing that's a tricky one. You know, a lot a lot of times people don't know how. Like what do I do? I, I was given these images. They're what I'm approved to uh, sell. You know, these are the images that I'm allowed to use. It's you know vendor criteria, whatever. Well, there's a lot of tricks you can do for that if it makes sense and and your product still displays correctly by flipping the image horizontally using a Photoshop tool or some other image management tool. That'll actually bypass the duplicate image criteria. Um, you can also add borders and um, watermarks and things like that. A watermark will typically not allow you to pass a duplicate content filter, but um, so get creative with your images. The best uh, the best case scenario is you, you take 100% unique original images for all the products you're selling in your store. Images that were never found before on the internet. That is the type of stuff that Google's looking for. And I say Google, I mean all the other search engines, but you know, you, you, if, you, if you optimize for Google, you're going to win on all the other platforms. So focus on them. They're the toughest. Uh, and most people use Google. Google. So um, images are really important. They are considered content. Uh, if you have duplicate images on your site, you will get a duplicate image or a duplicate content penalty. Your Panda score will go down. This is, has a lot to do with Panda, which is the, the site quality algorithm. It's quality control. It it's looks to reward sites with um, with uh, quality standards in place. Uh, okay, so other other product page um, opportunities are content. The descriptions you get from your from your manufacturers are probably not good for a number of reasons. One, they're going to be duplicated. We covered that. Two, it probably does not contain very powerful copywriting for your users. You know, are you going to trust your manufacturer, your vendor, to provide you the exact copy you want your visitor to read right before they click the Add to Cart button? Probably not. I know I wouldn't. I'm a copywriter, so I would want to get in there and add features and benefits and persuasive language about the product. Um, you know, I would have a writer customize that content so that it was, you know, it was very persuasive. And, uh, you know, just take the opportunity to either curate meaning add to and expand on the product descriptions that your manufacturer gives you or just write completely new descriptions if you don't have the resources to do that hire somebody that can uh, it's worth it it's it's an extra step I know it's more work you're running a business I get it but if it if it makes the difference between you ranking in the search engines and not don't you want to you're already investing in building a store right so take the time to do this correctly and um, the Google machine will reward you. Um, okay, so more opportunities are uh, product reviews. Uh, customers like to review things and customers like to read reviews from other customers. So if you add a customer, a product review module to your product pages, you are accomplishing a number of things. One, users like it. So you are adding credibility to your store. You're adding more feedback about your products. And you're also, every time somebody adds a product review to that particular product, you are freshening up the page. Google loves freshness. They love recency. They love new information. They love updated information, and they love user engagement. So the more you can allow this on your e-commerce product pages, uh, the better they will perform. Now, I do understand that reviews aren't always the best. However, you can control a lot with your e-commerce platform. You can get in there and, and set 
uh, your your product review settings to uh, only approve manually. So when somebody submits a review, it'll send you an email, and you can approve that. Uh, you can use your discernment to to decide which reviews you want to display and not. Um, <clears throat> you also want to uh, use schema-rich snippets on your product pages. This is this is mission critical. You have to do it. It's uh, most, I would say, 98% of e-commerce sites on the web are not using schema currently, and they're missing a huge opportunity. Schema is essentially detailed information intended to help users with specific search queries. And without getting too technical and too geeky on you, uh, might be too late. But um, Google, there are a bunch of a bunch of nerds, a bunch of geeks over there. They love structure. They love organization. They love it when you tag content with descriptive text to tell them exactly what's on your page. And they love it so much they will even reward you by displaying that exact information in the search results when somebody go, when somebody searches your. Uh, your product or your brand. I'll give you an example. Um, you can see nowadays when you search for flights, you can see flight information right on the Google page. You can see restaurant menus. You can see event details, dates, uh, all that kind of stuff. So you can have uh, a tremendous advantage of your competition if you use schema-rich snippets correctly on your product pages. You can display things like Gold Star Reviews, the product reviews module we just we just talked about. You can display gold stars next to your listing when it shows up organically in search. You can display the price. You can you can display in stock. Uh, you can use schema for your product name, your product description, your specifications. Um, there's a lot of opportunities for e-commerce product schema. Use it. It will give you a huge advantage of your competition, and Google will reward you, and you get to be more optimized because it. Uh, it tells Google exactly what's on your page and exactly what's there, so there's no question about it. Um, okay, so use schema as much as possible. Um, your category pages are also really important. Um, you want to have a main image. If, you, if it makes sense for your store to have a main image on your site or on your category page, use a banner. Don't use a banner that's very tall and pushing all the product information and all the all the juicy product links and things like that too far down the page. Use a, a, a small a, a, a banner that doesn't have a lot of vertical height so that you don't push content too below the fold. That's something to consider. You want to have content above the fold immediately viewable to users on all browsers. Okay, so um, but when you do use a, a a banner on your on your category page, optimize the banner, make it unique. Same criteria applies. Unique images are best. Uh, optimize the file name of the image, the alt text of the image, and um, you know make it good, make it persuasive. Tell people to shop. Tell people to engage. Uh, other things about category pages is you probably want to have some sort of content block. If it makes sense to put that that content block above your products, or maybe just below your banner image, or to the side, uh, maybe wrapping around the image, something like that, that's usually good because it it adds a little bit of static content uh, that allows you to control the semantic balance of the text on your category pages. Because let's face it, category pages are in fact big SEO opportunities. You can hit some big keyword terms uh, on category pages that you would not be able to hit on a product page or a home page. Uh, so take advantage of your category page opportunities. Optimize that content with Hummingbird in mind. Use question and answer. Okay, so Google releases all these updates to their algorithm, and they give them pet names like Panda and Hummingbird and Penguin and all these you know silly zoo animal names. So anyways, Panda is a site quality algorithm. Hummingbird's a, a, a semantic search type question and answer, uh, answering the the questions behind the user's search type algorithm. Penguin is a is actually a penalty algorithm that is designed to demote sites that don't have quality links pointing to them or over optimization of anchor text. Uh, we'll go into all that on a different video. So uh, back to uh, category pages. Your content is really important. Use a hummingbird style of, of, of text. Use question and answer format. Ask questions and then answer them. What questions will users naturally have by landing on this page? You can talk about the different products that are in that category, uh, whether or not the products are you know quick to ship, easy to wash, fun to play with, whatever makes sense for your particular niche. Ask a question, use a headline, something 
like an h2 tag and then build out that um, you know build out that content block with answers to those questions using a headline and paragraph answer type format now it might not make sense for you to put that content immediately you know at the top of the page before all the products are viewed so you could push it to the bottom of the product list uh, things things are sensitive on on category pages uh, for a number of reasons uh, one <clears throat> you have to display products on that page which means those products are going to come with an image and a product link now by default most e-commerce platforms push the products to the category page with a link that is the product name by default that is the setting which means if you are optimizing your product pages correctly with keywords in the in the product name like I like I went over with you you may have an over optimization situation on your category page so what do you do and what I mean by that is I'll give you an example let's say you have 30 products displaying on a category page they're all beanbag chairs and um, while they're all different types of beanbag chairs you have the word beanbag chair in your product name if you display all those product names on your category page let's say it's an adult beanbag chair category page you are going to have 30 instances of the word beanbag chair on your category page that's too many you're not going to rank if you have that many that's called keyword stuffing in Google penalizes that kind of stuff it de they devalue it they're, they it looks like you're trying to game the search engine so they're going to demote you and not promote you so what do you do uh, usually on the good e-commerce platforms there's somewhere in the platform that allows you to customize exactly what that product link or product you know custom name might be it's they, they label it differently for every platform that you're in but it's important to research that and figure out what that product display name looks like when it is displayed on your category pages now if your platform doesn't support that you may need to have a programmer go in and build you something custom into your platform that allows you to control the product links on your category pages otherwise they're never gonna rank product images are also important uh, if you're using alt text on your product pages you need to try and um, not use that or not be redundant with that on your category pages as well I'll give you an example um, if you stuff the word uh, beanbag chair blue beanbag chair red beanbag chair green bean, beanbag chair you know black <clears throat> in all the alt text of your category page thumbnails right because it's not the full page the full product picture if if all those thumbnails have a very similar or very redundant keyword optimized alt text that's a red flag too you gotta you gotta watch out for that so this is a combination of knowing what to optimize for and knowing how not to destroy your rankings in the process it's very sensitive Google makes it really fun for us SEO people um, another thing is avoid duplicate product lists don't create multiple categories that have the same product list that display the same that you're gonna run into a duplicate content issue there uh, one way you might work around that if you need to display the same products in in two different categories is by using a content block either above or below that product list so things to watch out for um, you know other 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 recommendations would be adding social share features to your to your product pages um, you know when somebody likes a product they they might want to share it to Facebook or pin it to Pinterest tweet it to Twitter or share it on Google Plus when people do that those are really powerful metrics for those particular pages that carry that social citation link back to and um, it's something we actually do uh, we build into the linking strategies that we do for our SEO clients so um, we can we can manufacture a lot of those types of signals uh, organically of course uh, you know whether or not you have those social share features on your actual pages I understand there's limitations sometimes uh, so there's a lot of things you can do on the site obviously we just covered a ton of information about e-commerce specifically um, you might also add a blog you know f fresh content blogging about products doing product reviews getting customer feedback things like that there's a number of other creative things you can do we haven't talked at all about conversion optimization this didn't cover that at all um, we have a a 32 point checklist for e-commerce sites that we that we run through when optimizing e-commerce sites for conversion specifically we've taken e-commerce sites from uh, 
just recently a big win was 0.47 uh, on a on a conversion rate to 3.3 uh, site-wide conversion rate by by implementing this 32 point checklist it has to do with optimizing the header the footer uh, the category pages the product information uh, what we know is there's certain things that increase trust and increase conversion and entice people to click and buy and uh, we can help you with that too but that a lot of that stuff will be covered in a different video uh, or you can just pick up the phone and and call us and we can help you with all of this stuff we just went over uh, or the conversion optimization or the SEO promotion aspects as well. So thank you for listening. Sorry to be such a geek. I hope you liked it. Uh, optimize your store.